Afternoon all. By special request for Ollie. This is my Iowata Neo. And this is the second one I've owned in... Uh, well, the first one lasted seven years, so this one's lasted two years at the moment and still going strong. So basically... Um, what it is, is he asked, um, he had a bit of a problem with his, and uh, basically it was how to clean them. So, I'm not the god, but this is how I clean mine. So if I finished a, a spraying session, um, then this is what I'd do. So I undo that, take that out. Now if I went for a full clean, I'd do that back up. I undo this. Um, So I undo this, I take that out. So this is basically like a, not a part, but a full service. Undo that. Undo that. Undo that. And then last but not least, I did have wherever it's gone. I can't see it now. This is like a little spanner, but I haven't I haven't got it. So basically you just look for where the flat spots are there and just give it a quick little bit of a turn. And off comes that bit there. So it's all open now. Can take the cup off, but I tend not to bother. But sometimes it's it's worth it because you can see like there, there's a few crumbs, and then sometimes it's always good to clean around in there. So what we do is we get this, and usually I get some of this, which is uh, Mr. Leveller soak the earbud. So you've got a a little thing down there which you can just give it a quick twizzle and bring it out so there's a bit of crap for starters this has always got stuff in the bottom so on here so it's cleaning that it's very fair yeah. small bottle of thinners here it does the same thing you're not trying to level the paint trying to clean it so just dip it in and then you can run it round there. Because this thing is as hot, it uh, it melts the paint straight away. If there's anything untoward, which there is on that, I can see that it's uh, so it's looking a bit cleaner. You can always get a piece of tissue. Run your finger now in the thread like that and it cleans it out. Now I'll have to get my my mate on here to show you a proper way to clean your airbrush because he collects airbrushes and um, I don't know anybody else that uh, well what you don't know about airbrushes ain't worth knowing so he's kind of like the, the guru of it
So there we go. So that's that there. Now you do get some crap in there sometimes. I found the best way to get rid of that is put a drop of gear in there. And then um, this here. You can push that in there. That's just like a pipe cleaner. And when you put it in there, that, it's all coming out. Skin's going, might look, that's, that, that's this stuff. Kills your skin. Right. A couple more, see if I can make this into a point. So, and then mop it out of there, as you can see. See, no, it's a bit, a bit clearer. There you go. And then you can do the same thing again. You want to get as much as you can out of that, <coughs> and then, like I say, and then just go round and round and round like that with it using one of these and then rub it off on there and that's how dirty that is so, right that's that bit and then we got this bit which is the bit where your needle sits so what you can do here Put it, I put it in the end of the pipette like this. So it sits like that. And then I get this thing. Yeah, and then anything that is in that. Twizzle it around just to try and break any loose part at the same time. Just want to clean that off. Right, then we got this, so this gets paint on it sometimes, which is the brass valve. So you throw that sticking, and then the only other thing I've known to get paint on it was this, but this actually looks pretty clean. And sometimes you get, oh, hang on, I'm too close. Sometimes you get paint in there. But this all works pretty clean. So the only thing I'll do is give that a little bit of a once over. Like so. And that's about it. And put the spring back on and then put it back in there. And then put the screw cap back on the end. 
push that forwards, <coughs> put it in there, and then start to tighten it up. So. I'm at my mate screaming now. What are you doing with that airbrush? <laughs> he doesn't like it when I do things like this. And the only reason he doesn't like it is because he knows he knows better. Ooh, they're fighting down there by the sounds of it. So you just clean that out in there. There's a little bit of dirt there, not much. And then the other thing is in the... Oops. In the well, I don't know whether there's any dirt in there or not, but What's that I don't know, a bit, not much. Right, and then down there, you can see there's a little bit down there, there's not much down there. And then if you want, you can get this, and you can just poke it down there, or best ways like that. Right, that's it. Your little point, put it back on. That's it. Right, and then just a little nip. That's it. Then this can go back on this clean bit here. Then we just got this bit here to clean up, which is the little shroud. Yep. Right, that's clean now. Put that back on. Then you get your needle. Now, this I was told by a guy in Farnborough. I can't remember the name of the shop, but when I took it there, it wasn't this bear brush, it was the one I had before. He said about putting needles in. So you get them like that. <clears throat> this is undone. You don't need it off. You just don't need to undo it. And then you get your needle like that and then you put it in and you don't do that you do this so you slide it down like that so it stops and then you just nip it up that's it that is it but I've forgotten one thing and that was this this piece here there's a little thumbnail bit missing there. So take the needle right out. Pull this back. Put that in. And that sits in the hole where that all goes. And then again, so we get the, get the needle. Press it on the side, focus it in. Slide it down until, let's bring it out of it. So you put it in and you slide it down to your fingers. You only gently don't grab it like a bloody span or a hammer. And that's that. Then we've got some eye water lube. That can go on there. And then that goes in there. So that's that. Uh, what you can do also is I sometimes do this. So I'll put like a drip. Of lube on the needle so that when it goes in, you twist it. And that's it. And it helps to lubricate that bit there. Then you can put... Um, Just an incy wincy bit of lube on there. It just makes for an easy where it goes round like that. That's that done up. Right, and then on there. <coughs> Wallop. That's done up. That's done up. That's all done up. Right. Then we had some air. And then. And then put a little bit in, a couple of drips. Oh. 
And then I don't think I've got any camera ball do I? I do there. That's the only one. Might be able to rip a bit off this little box behind and hold up. Get a knife and cut this bloody thing. Right, so you got a bit of cardboard here. Um, shouldn't be nothing coming out because you're just pushing down for air, and then when you start bringing it back, there you go. Fat, thin. Now, the other thing as well is, is ratios to paint. I use this, Mr. Color. So, I don't really measure it in percentage, but what I do do is, is when I tip paint into there, so, uh -uh. just get a pointy stick thing. God, yeah, someone set the oven on fire. So when I tip paint into the airbrush, there's the bottom and it comes up. And normally I'll put the paint to about here, where this line is. So you paint it right on the edge of there. And then I'll fill it up to there with thinners. So you're probably looking at 60 40 so 40 paint 60 thinners <clears throat> have a mate of mine does it uh, 20 80. The paint's really thin when it goes on you know it's, it does look a bit, a bit scary but it is what it is so that's what i use i use a like a, a 60 40 mix <clears throat> and when you're using mr leveler it's um it, it's quite nice because it not only does it gloss up but it um it it helps level the finish of the paintwork as well. So yeah, so it's not, that's that's why I use sixty forty. Most of the time it's sixty forty, <coughs> and uh, that's how I clean my airbrush. So hopefully that'll help you, and then. Yeah. Never had to do anything else with them other than that, really. And if you're going to constantly use paints and spray, so say if you're going to use it for a day, you can just just thinners and just you don't even have to clean the thing out. Just leave it as it is and just add your next colour and away you go. Um, and then I normally just. Once I've finished, just leave, just hang it out for the day and leave it. I might just give it a quick wipe round with a bit of rag, but that's, you know, like that. Quick wipe round. And then, you know, clean her up. Get her looking nice again, so that when I come back to it, it's not all smothered in paint, but there might be paint inside there, but it doesn't matter because when you use that leveler, it's so hot, it melts it, and it just... And you're back, back in action again. The only time I'll ever really, really clean it out like I've just done it. It's usually like if I'm going on holiday and I'm not going to be using it for a couple of weeks, you know, or a week, then, psh, yeah, clean it up. So, there you go. So, hopefully, <coughs> I signed out a few creases for you. And, um, yeah, that's how I do it. So, like I say, I'm not the the Bible on this matter. My mate, um, he's got far better ways of doing it he can go into it more depth so maybe just maybe if i can get him to do a video um but i won't be able to show his face <laughs> but if i could get him to do a video on it i'll get him to do a video on airbrush and airbrush cleaning and the use of an airbrush with paints and stuff and um yeah we'd be good to go and that's another notch on the belt right people hope you enjoyed that see you again soon take it easy it's bye for now